Hi, I'm Claire Tompkins, the Clutter Coach, and this is the Organize Your Life podcast. I am passionate about organizing because it makes my clients' lives so much easier, more relaxed, and with more time to spend the way they want to. In every podcast in the show, I'll lay out a simple organizing concept, and I'll tell you why it's important. I'll also include an action step at the end so you can start practicing right away. My specialty is chunking down this big topic so it's not overwhelming. That's the concept for this podcast, which is based on my first book, 52 Simple Ways to Get Organized. The book is available on my website and on Amazon. I work with clients in person in the Berkeley, California area and via email and Skype, so you don't have to be local to me. Visit the Hire tab on my website or email me at claire at cluttercoach.net. If you like the show, please rate it and review it. To do that, go to my website, cluttercoach.net, and scroll down for the show notes. Each show notes post has a link to leave a review in iTunes. I would so appreciate that. Okay, on to the podcast. Today is podcast number 60. It's about creating good passwords, keeping them safe, and of course, being able to remember and find them again. This topic was requested by a listener. If you have a topic you want me to talk about, jump over to my Patreon page. Go to patreon.com and search on Clutter Coach. I posted there asking for your ideas on what I should talk about in the podcast. Because it's about you, not me. Add your comment there and I will see it. Passwords are a necessary chore. They are a chore because you really need to make good ones in order to keep your information safe. It's super tempting to get lazy and use the same one over and over, or use something that's really easy to guess. I am amazed when I read that people still use password as their password. Seriously? Or 12345. That's apparently a popular one. Many people like encryption programs or even a password-protected Word document. But there's still that one key password you need to remember, or else you lose all the others. How do you keep that one safe? And if your program does get compromised somehow, you've got a hundred or more passwords to change. That just seems way too risky to me. I have my own favorite way of making passwords that I rarely hear anyone else mention. I happen to think it's a really good method, mainly because it allows you to write stuff down. You write down your hints, not the actual passwords themselves, so you don't rely on remembering them. If you've been listening to my podcast for a while, you know that I am a big believer in writing things down and not trying to remember them. What I do is I use names and numbers from my past. It's key to use information that is not current, that won't appear, say, on your Facebook page. And it should be information that you know well and will never forget. Use information like street names and house numbers of places people you know have lived. Not your addresses. Using relatives is okay as long as you construct your hint in a way that doesn't include that relationship status. Your hint is that person's first name, not Uncle Joe, right? One benefit of getting older is that you have so much more of this information to choose from. How about your third grade teacher's last name? The street your high school boyfriend lived on. It's best to use proper nouns, not words you'd find in the dictionary, because those bots can read the dictionary. So, think of someone who lived down a street with a more exotic name than Main Street or Third Street. Here are some other ideas. You can use current information as long as it's not directly connected to you. Don't use your pet's name, but use the name of your neighbor's dog. Your hint is the neighbor's first name plus dog. Pretty hard for a stranger to guess that. Or a bot. Combine a number and a word, and then add punctuation for extra security. The punctuation is safe to write down since it's only a small portion of the entire password. Your hint might be exclamation point, exclamation point, Molly dog, bill address. There you go. Where do you keep all these hints? I suggest Evernote because I love Evernote, even though they don't pay me to say that. Create a notebook in Evernote with an entry for each entity, like your bank, and then your password hint. Programs like Evernote are great because the information is on your computer, on your phone, and it's in the cloud, so you can't lose it. It's also in your backup files because you back up your computer, right? But if you're really tied to paper, tie it down. Punch a hole in the corner of that password notebook and attach it to your computer monitor with a string, and you can't lose it. 
I'm quite serious about that. It's old school, but it will work. Or find some other object to attach it to, the way gas stations attach the bathroom key to some unwieldy object that you won't absentmindedly stuff into your purse. Or get a really big bright green notebook that stands out on your desk. Or get a small one that you always carry in your bag. Then you have it when you're out and about as well. The trick here is being strict about putting it back into the bag every time you take it out. Of course, this is the trick to being able to find anything again. Give it a place to live and return it to that spot every time you finish using it. Simple, but it takes practice. That's why I keep repeating this over and over and over. This also touches on the issue of too much stuff in general. The more stuff that's out on your desk, the less likely you'll be able to find any given thing. What if your kitchen counter was like that? All the food, all the utensils, all the plates, all the cookware out on the counter at once? Not a recipe for success. The big picture here is to develop password habits. Adopt a method for creating passwords and stick with it. Choose a place to record them and make a habit of doing that. Plus, make a habit of keeping that notebook in its special place. That's your to-do for this week. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm Claire Tompkins, The Clutter Coach. If you like the show, I'd love it if you leave a rating and review in iTunes. You can subscribe, too, so the podcast will be ready and waiting for you to listen to. You'll find the show notes on my blog at www.cluttercoach.net. And you can check out my store to find books I've written and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you're a fan of the show, you can become a patron on patreon.com for as little as a dollar a month. You can find my page by going to the Patreon website, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and searching on Clutter Coach. I'll still post the podcast free of charge, but I've got some cool rewards for folks who want to help me make the show even better. Come back next week for a new podcast.